Namaskaram Sadhguruji. Uh, the first question that I want to ask is uh, actually related to me. I'm, I'm, the, I'm in the last year of engineering. So uh, now there is a very big decision that I have to make now. And uh, people have told me that uh, if I take decisions from my heart, I'll be successful in life. So, but there lies a problem. The problem is that I'm, I don't know which, which thought is coming from my heart and which thought is coming from my brain. So how can I figure out like which thought is from my heart and uh, which is coming from my brain? The heart uh, makes only two sounds, lub dub. <laughs> Unless the local girls are disturbing it and it's going a little <laughs> crazy. Otherwise it makes only two sounds. Rest of the noise is all coming from your head. This idea that something comes from the heart, something comes from the brain, is a… it's metaphoric, but unfortunately a whole lot of people are taking it literally. There was a time in many parts of the world, particularly in Arabia, the medical science in Arabia believed the blood is pumped from the liver. You might have heard Urdu sayings about Kalija, you know, have you? <laughs> because they believed blood is being pumped from the Liver, because liver is a far more complicated organ than the heart. Heart is a simple pump. So do not give it any more responsibilities other than continuously pumping the blood and keeping you alive, <laughs> unless somebody here breaks it <laughs> So uh, about the last year of engineering, I want you to change that language because this happened. Can I tell you a joke? It's okay? Yeah. You're pretty it's serious about this, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> this happened. A very celebrated scientist was at a dinner and uh, he was not grandly dressed or anything, he was looking very ordinary. So the lady who was, you know, <laughs> sitting next to him, didn't pay much attention to him, she doesn't know who he is. But after some time, just to be polite, to make some conversation, may I know what do you do? He said, I'm studying science. She said, oh, I finished that in my tenth class <laughs> So you're not going to… you know, you're not in the last year of engineering, maybe the course, but not the last year of engineering because for your entire life, if you learn engineering, when you are dying after hundred years, okay? <laughs> I'm not preponing it. I after so. <laughs> after hundred years when you are dying, you would still know, if you are a constant learning process, you would still know you know very little about engineering. With that little, many things happen, that's different. So don't be in the last year of engineering. I know the program may be closing, but not the last year of engineering, okay? So, an engineering, essentially engineering means to have things the way we want, yes? When we say this building is well engineered, I'm not saying that. <laughs> if we say this building is well engineered or an automobile is well engineered, what it means is, it's functioning the way we want, yes? Of all the pieces of engineering on this planet, of many pieces of engineering, a tree is a fantastic engineering, even a mountain is fantastic engineering because it stood there for a million years, that means it must be good engineering, isn't it? Yes? Something that stands there for a million years must be well engineered. Of all this, the most sophisticated piece of engineering is human mechanism, isn't it so? Hello? Most sophisticated of all the pieces of engineering. Now, because it's a sophisticated piece of engineering, 
it needs a certain level of attention, otherwise you don't figure it. Now that we gave you such a highly, you know, high-tech piece of engineering, I am asking you, did you read the user's manual? I… I think there is no user manual for now <laughs> How can they make such a fantastic piece of engineering without a user's manual? Maybe it doesn't come with a booklet attached to your neck when you were born. <laughs> but uh, indications must be there, isn't it, how to use it? Huh? Is it true somebody who is an athlete or a gymnast or someone else like that, learns to use their body than a whole lot of other people. Yes? Obviously, at least one aspect of the physical engineering of the body, they seem to have read the user's manual about the physical aspects. Is it true certain people are able to use their mind better than others? Maybe they read another part of the user's manual. So, now, uh, with this heart manual and the brain manual, see, the problem is most people are prejudiced against the brain. This is a question or always comes to me, Sadhguru, I want to meditate but thoughts are coming. The common question everywhere. I ask them, see, I'll make you meditate. We will stop the liver, we'll stop the kidney, we'll stop the heart, we'll stop everything, okay? Oh, no Sadhguru <laughs> So you want the liver to function when you're meditating? You want the kidneys to function? You want even the spleen to function? You want the heart to function? But you don't want your brain to function for some reason. This is simply because brain is a new equipment that you got in the evolutionary process. This level of cerebral development happened more recently compared to the other systems. If you cut open any mammal, they all have all these parts, isn't it? Every part that you have here, all of them have. Even if you open a frog, most of you, your biology department <laughs> Even if you open a frog, almost everything that you have, he also has, isn't it? It is only… the big difference is only the cerebral development, which is a more recent happening. Because it's a more recent happening, most people have not figured how to handle it. So user's manual is very important. You don't read a user's manual just before you discard the machine. You read it in the first few days, isn't it? Hello? If you buy a phone, do you want to read the user's manual in the first three days or after three years when you're throwing it away? First three days, isn't it? So, knowing how this functions is very important. Never did ever heart generate any thought or intention. Well, when you looked at the young girl, heart beat <laughs> more. That doesn't mean it's saying anything, it's just trying to compensate for the other levels of excitement that's happening. The heart is not trying to say anything, it is only compensating, you need more blood, so it's pumping <laughs> little harder. <laughs> That'll happen even if you run up the staircase, yes? What happens to you little panting when you fall in love also happens physiologically when you run up a staircase, yes or no? Fear also does that to a whole lot of people. So heart is not trying to say anything, it is just trying to make sure every part of the body gets the nourishment of blood flow. So it's your brain speaking in different tongues. What's your native language? What's your mother tongue? My asmis. So, because when you know two, three languages, sometimes it gets confused, sometimes it speaks in English, sometimes in Assamese, sometimes in something else. So you're thinking different people are speaking, heart is speaking, mind is speaking, no. There is thought and there is emotion. People think these two things are saying different things. They're not saying different things. The way you think is the way you emote, isn't it so? 
Right now, if I think, oh, she is the most wonderful person on the planet, I just have to think, then my emotions become sweet towards her. Now I think she is the most horrible creature on the planet. Now my emotions become nasty, yes or no? I cannot think she is horrible and have sweet emotions. I cannot think she is wonderful and have nasty emotions, isn't it so? But today I thought she is the most wonderful person and my sweetness was flowing. Suddenly she did something tomorrow that I don't like. I think she is horrible. Thought is agile, it changes direction just like that. Emotion is little sappy. It takes time to turn around. So that period you struggle as if there are two dimensions of thing happening. Because thought is saying one thing, emotion is still going sweet because it takes time to become nasty. Everybody struggles but it catches up or no after some time. Hello? Today you thought she's wonderful, sweetness was flowing, tomorrow she did something you don't like, you thought she's horrible, Mind, the thought is clearly saying she's horrible, but emotions are struggling because they can't turn quickly, they take time to turn. But after a week or ten days or two months, depending on how deeply you're engaged, <laughs> after some time, emotion catches up with the thought. Emotion also says, yes, she's nasty, horrible, so we'll let's be nasty to her. <laughs> so, they're not speaking dif different languages, one is agile, another is little slow in his corners. So, it looks like they're speaking different languages. When it comes to what you want to do, uh, you must think clearly, it's very important. Thinking clearly means, the question is not about what will get me this, what will get me that. Are you… is your life precious to you, all of you, I'm asking? Yes. Your life, is it precious to you? Yes. So before you invest this life into something, you must look whether today if I invest my life into this, after twenty-five years, will it still mean a lot to me? After fifty years, will it still mean a lot to me? At the end of my life, you turn back and I look, will I be proud of this or will I be ashamed of what I'm doing right now? Doesn't matter what other people say. But you should not do anything that you will feel ashamed of, isn't it so? Huh? It doesn't matter, people say so many things. Everybody has an opinion, it's their business. But you don't do something that you will feel ashamed of, isn't it? Then you're going turning against yourself. Somebody turns against you, you can leave them and go somewhere else. If you turn against yourself, you'll have to live with it forever. So this is all you have to look at it. Somebody… something will get you money, something will get you comfort, that's not the point. What you choose to do, will it give you a life? When I say give it… give you a life, are you just trying to make a living or are you trying to make a life out of this? This is important. Making a living is not an issue. A worm, an insect, a bird, an animal, all of them are making their life, making a living, isn't it so? They're even making a life out of it, but definitely they're making a living. So making a living with such a big brain is not an issue. Earning your food is not an issue, making a living is not an issue. Only problem is you want to live like somebody else, that's an endless problem. I want to live is not a problem. I want to live like you, this is a problem. So it is important if you consider your life as a precious life, you must make sure you make a wonderful life out of this, hmm? Whatever opens up in that direction, that is the thing you should do. But when you are under the pressure of peers, somebody is saying, I'm going to America, somebody says, I'm going to the government job, somebody says, I'm doing this. So one thing that all of you should do before you make big decisions in your life is withdraw from these pressures of peers, professors, parents, everybody. Just spend three days to one week by yourself. Look at it, what is it that you really want to do? Not under pressure from other people. What does this life want to do? Do that, it doesn't matter what other people think about it.